How do you like to spend less time doing reconciliations? Whether you're reconciling your personal bank statement, your company's bank statements, or two accounts that are supposed to be in balance, it can be a time-consuming and annoying, albeit necessary, exercise. Too often you have to weed through hundreds, if not thousands, of transactions to find the mistakes. That can take a huge amount of time. We've got a few shortcuts or tricks, if you will, to help you find those mistakes faster. Make sure you stick around until the end when we identify the one strategy that helps many jumpstart the reconciliation process and eliminate many of the reconciliation items. Let's be here, let's be clear here what we mean. We're not just talking about bank wrecks, although these tricks definitely work there. And by the way, these tactics will work when you're reconciling your own personal bank statements, which I hope you do on a regular basis. They can be used any time you are comparing two sets of data that are supposed to be equal, but they aren't. I used these tactics when I worked for a very large insurance company and the cash we were showing on the treasurer's books, i.e. the amount we supposedly had in the bank, did not agree with the records coming out of the controller's department, i.e. the records that were being used to create the audited financial statements. As you might imagine, our auditors were less than happy, and in fact, they told the CFO that they better get this matter fixed or they weren't going to sign off on the financial statements. And you know what a mess that would be. Um, you can imagine how well this went over. So myself and a colleague were assigned to wade through the thousands of transactions to get the books balanced. I want to caution you before we start against ignoring small discrepancies. Too often, somebody will note that the amount they are off is a small amount and not statistically significant. What they are not taking into account, especially if your data set is large, is that small differences can actually be hiding two or more large compensating errors. If the matter isn't resolved, isn't reconciled, there could be a massive problem down the line. Let me give you a simple example. Think about your personal account, your personal bank account. Let's say you entered a $100 deposit as $1,000. This could hide a good number of withdrawals that you forgot to note. And if you don't reconcile, you would only become aware of this when a check bounced or a payment was, didn't go through, or you went to the bank to withdraw money for the weekend, and there was none there. But enough about this. On to our shortcuts. Let's say the amount that you're off is $180.54. Trick number one, I call this the quick hack. Do a quick search for $180.54. When you find it, look to see if it is in there twice. If it is, dig a little deeper. Is the amount to the same account? If so, maybe it was entered twice in error. When you find it, research to see what happened. Now you have to be careful because sometimes you will honestly pay the same amount to two different entities or receive, receive the same amount from two different entities and it's legit. So the research is really important. Now, maybe it's not in there twice, just once. Then you need to investigate whether it should be in there at all. For example, maybe you were going to issue a check, but at the last management minute, management decided not to issue the payment. So they pulled the check and destroyed it, but then never went in and reversed the transaction on your accounting records. So it's still sitting there. Or worse, there were plans to move money from one subsidiary to another. The accounting was done, but for whatever reason, the money was not sent. In either case, you'll need to put through a journal entry to get it off your books. Now, I really love trick number two. Trick number two is one I affectionately refer to as the double hack. Let me explain. In this case, divide the unreconciled amount by two. In, the, in our simple example, the $180.54, we take it and we divide it by two, and we get $90.27. Then search for that amount. That's right, search for $97.27. When you find it, research it. What you will probably find is a debit that was put in as a credit or vice versa. In the case of a bank rec, you'll find a deposit entered as an expense or an expense entered as a deposit. Although, if you're anything like me, it's always an expense entered as a deposit 
rather than the other. It's never a surprise leaving me with more money than I thought I had. Did the same thing happen to you? When I first pulled this trick, when I was doing that big reconciliation project, my colleague thought I had lost my mind. After he saw it work three or four times, he was converted. But don't bother even trying this account if you get an amount that has a portion of the amount. So for example, if the amount we had, we were off was $180.55 instead of 54 cents, and then we would have been off when we divided by two by $90.27 and a half cents. Well, that means it, it, it wasn't this because we don't use fractions of cents. But again, you want to make sure you research it to ensure it isn't a coincidence that the number showed up. Now, I learned the next tactic in Accounting 102, 101, sorry, 101. You probably did as well, although that doesn't mean you remember to use it. Of course, the technique I am going to discuss at the end was not even taught in accounting class, at least when I went back, went to school, back in the dark ages. All right, track number three, which I call the looking for transpositions hack. Did you know this one? If so, let us know in the comments and make sure you let us know if you are already using it. What do I mean by a transposition? It's when you switch two numbers. People do it all the time. I should know. Let's say you're going to enter $52. That's the amount you want to enter, but you're rushing. So instead you enter $25. Now, how can you find this? Divide the unreconciled amount by nine. Are you already groaning because you know what's coming and you can't believe you didn't think to use it? If the answer to this calculation is a round number with no fractions, then you might have a transposition somewhere. So in our example of $180.54, when you divide by nine, we get $20.06. If the answer had been $20.6.5, then it isn't time to look for a transposition. Where should you look for the transposition? Will depend on how much you are off. If you're only off by a few cents, start by focusing on the last two digits when you're looking for your errors. Often people get the cents wrong and you can find it equal easily. If you're off, let's say $200, then you want to look in the $100 fields and not worry about the cents. Now you've probably noticed that these tactics only work when you have one discrepancy left. Of course, you don't know that there's only one discrepancy left until you're done. So you'll try these tricks. If none of these tricks get you to the finish line, and they might not, continue whittling down your unreconciled amount and then repeat the tricks when you've got it reduced. These will help you find that last stubborn unreconcilable amount. Before we get to the last bonus trick that will eliminate many of your errors, if you're getting value from this talk, please hit the like button. It helps us grow the channel. But before you get to that last transaction where one of the three quick tricks we've discussed might work, there's another simple hack you can use to identify items that are in more times than they should be. Dump all your data into an Excel spreadsheet and use the conditional formatting feature to identify potential duplicate items. Then go through and investigate all the duplicates. This is such a powerful step that many folks start their reconciliations this way. If you regularly do reconciliations, you'll know if this is a good idea for you. If you do it for several months in a row, for example, and you don't find any duplicates, then it's probably not the type of error that gets made in your shop. On the other hand, if you use it and find even five or 10 duplicates, this might be a great way to start and you can eliminate the easy to find errors pretty quickly. And who doesn't want to do that? If you aren't sure how to use conditional formatting, you want to check out our video on identifying duplicates using conditional formatting in all sorts of accounts payable and accounting files. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.